Welcome to another edition of the Dream Nation podcast. I'm your host, Yulia, and this episode is running late because I've been really busy expanding my podcast into a creative ad agency. I have a background of a creative director for the last 10 years in New York, doing interactive, social, um, a lot of different 360 work, and um, I've expanded the services of Dream Nation. So now we work with brands helping to promote stories surrounding women and diversity, which is my passion. So check out dreamnation.io to learn more. You can find everything that we do there. We just wrapped up a really awesome project with South by Southwest. We helped them develop their first International Women's Day celebration. That was super exciting. And it was really fun to be in Austin for a few days and meet everybody. So now we're back. And uh, the podcast is here, and I'm really, really excited to introduce Ariel, who is the founder of Pro Mama. It's a really, really wonderful website that connects moms to jobs and jobs to moms. So if you're looking for a flexible schedule, this is a really awesome site, and you should tell all the other moms about it. So tune in to the show and tell your friends. Have a great day. Let's we'll just go straight into the podcast. I'll just ask some questions, and um, I won't take up too much of your time. Perfect. I'm so excited. The question that I ask all of my guests is, what was your dream as a kid? Okay, this is a tough one. First, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited to be talking to you and about this subject, the things we're going to cover today. As far as my dream job when I was young, I thought really long and hard about this and tried to come up with something really weird and perfect, but that's totally not authentic. And really... I like didn't have one thing. There were so many things I wanted to do. I wanted to cut hair. I wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be a librarian. Um, I think though that makes sense now looking at my current career and like all of the things I want to still do and all of the jobs I'm really excited to have even when I'm 80 years old. Um, and really, like, the basis of all of the jobs I've ever wanted, they were all strongly creative. So looking back, I think maybe I'm maybe I'm projecting onto all of those things. But, yeah, so I think it's – I've always wanted to do a lot of different things, but mostly creative things. I love it. And I'm totally going to hold you to doing a podcast together again when we're 80 because I know I'm still going to be doing this podcast when I'm 80 because I think, you know, as creatives, we, we don't stop we just keep on going like that's what makes us live absolutely and you know I was listening to some other podcast I'm like a voracious podcast listener and someone was talking about how and I think as a creative you'll identify with this you feel like this fire inside of you all, all of a sudden like I have this idea I need to make it whatever media or whatever format I just need to get this out of me somehow it's it feels like it will destroy me if I don't get this out mm-hmm Yep. And I still have those, even though I don't have the time to dedicate to do those things. And so I've been trying to practice saying to my creative self, like, thank you. I hear you. I know you're there. I cannot listen to you right now, but I will be back. And there will be a time in a year or three years. And I need you to still be there because then I will make this thing that you want me so badly to make. Um, because I think otherwise it, it would it would destroy me <laughs> you know what? I started journaling too so if you start journaling those ideas because sometimes you just don't have time right but you keep them in a journal and you can come back to them because sometimes you just forget and time goes by but they're really great ideas and um I'm I'm out of time too but I've been also doing a thing where I just dedicate just 15 minutes a day to something I just go 15 minutes I'm gonna do this it's gonna be really quick but I'm going to do it. And those 15 minutes a day add up over time. If you just take 15 minutes, do something tiny, it might take you like a whole year to build it, but you're still moving slow. Like I'm all about the turtle life. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a hare. <laughs> People are like, you are still working on that project. And I'm like Chinese water torture. I'm like, oh yeah. I love the concept of pro mama. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about how that came around and uh, what your mission is with it. Sure. So um, Pro Mama, our mission first is to connect hardworking mamas with jobs that fit their life because we think women deserve to have it all. And the way it came about was frustration in my own life and one of my really good friends' lives. So we 
for more background, I was working as a art director at an agency. I had my son and I, I, I couldn't do my job anymore and I had to quit my job. And I didn't really understand how I could be an art director anymore. I thought my career was over. And that was really hard to think I was giving up something that I had worked so hard to do for so long and that I really, really loved. Um, and slowly over the course of the next two years, I started to get back into it. I started to work part time. I figured out a way to work and have a life, which like doesn't really exist a lot of times in the ad world. Oh, you have no life in the ad world. I spent 10 years in the ad world. You live, your life is the agency. You don't get to go home. And the thing is, it's really fun. So sometimes you don't know, you don't realize. And then suddenly I was, you know, I had a child and I didn't even have a community to support me because I had never built a community because my community was my job. And that's Yeah, because you cancel all the lunch dates and I know all about it. And you don't make events because you're working the weekend. Yeah, I know the story. You keep the few friends that stick with you through it all that are like, okay, cool. Call me when you get out of it. (laughs) Yes, yes. They are definitely like the thick and thin friends. They are the ones that will be with me till the end now. I know. So when did you start working on Pro Mama? So you did that. So yeah, so I did that. Um, and I was on a playground one day with one of my really good friends. And she said, you know, this sucks. Like it sucks to work and be a mom. Mm-hmm. And she had this idea to build a website to connect moms with mom friendly jobs. And I said, I'll build it for you. Let's do it. Like, let's make this. I know I can do this. And so we started meeting at night after our kids were asleep, writing these long Google Drive docs and connecting anytime we could, whether it was on a playground or like at 8.30 p.m. And a few months later, we had built Pro Mama, And uh, it's real, like it's a real thing, which is so exciting that we had this idea and we were able to build it in such a short amount of time. Your website is beautiful. And, and that's because obviously you're an art director. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. uh, Yeah, everybody should check out promama.co. And I was actually going to ask you about how long it took you to build it and what advice you have for other people who are building websites, right? Because as an art director, I'm assuming you might have some coding skills. You might know enough to get it up and running. You might know Squarespace really well. If you can share the journey of how you built your product, I'm sure my listeners would really love it. Sure. So I do have some coding experience, but I didn't want to rely on it because I wanted to be able to change and make adjustments on the fly really quickly. Additionally, I, the whole foundation of our idea is based on rapid prototyping. So we wanted to be able to, we have this hypothesis that women need better jobs. We want to be able to make that Uh, prove that hypothesis, but be really flexible in how we're doing it. So whatever we built needed to be flexible as well. And so I couldn't rely on my coding skills because my coding skills are not flexible. So I I am familiar with Squarespace and Wix and all of those, but I thought Wix had the most flexibility for me. Um, So I use that to uh, build promama.co and then you know, it's just basically hacking the tools. What can I do? How can I make this work? Okay, here's another problem. Let's create a problem, solve this. There is a way around it. I know I'll find a Google form. I'll ask a question. I'll get in touch with the help center at 2 Mm -hmm. a.m. But so that's what it's built on right now. And I think that it's been a really great tool. I know other people have different feelings, but if you are someone who wants to get an idea out in the world and you don't want to hit these roadblocks, I think that Wix is a great, great tool to use. I love Wix and I've also used Wix and Squarespace and WordPress. I've used all of them and I think they're such great tools because, you know, at the end you're getting an MVP up and you just want to test your hypothesis. So you want to get it up and running and then when the funding comes, you can always move up to a bigger site, right? You can always Exactly. Yeah, but you have to test it. And that's the biggest thing. You build something and you go, okay, do people need this? Awesome. Great. So, exactly. Yeah. I think a lot of people think they need something like super amazing and super fancy and like super, super like Amazon-like. And no, you just need something up really quickly. <laughs> Exactly. And I think too, it's a really good process to go through because you have to 
like, so I think people who are used to product innovation or innovation at all understand like the idea of an MVP, the minimum viable product that you can create that gets your idea across and can attract the right users and really test out your idea. And that was what we were really trying to do. What was the MVP that we could create? Um, I think the ad world really helped me uh, approach this process because you have this thing you care about so much and you have this passion for it, but you can't be so precious that you either hold on to it too long that you're not letting it out in the world or that you're trying to cram so much into it that it becomes this bloated thing that doesn't make sense. In the ad world, right? Like you're, you have all these amazing ideas that are your babies and they just get torn to pieces in front of you. And so you're used to that feeling and you um, are able to approach this terrifying idea of being an entrepreneur, I think, more easily. Yes, that's what I love about advertising. It made me so resilient. It yes, just, it's crazy. It just, you know, it made it okay for me to kill my darlings. And I realized that I shouldn't get attached to my ideas. And I also realized that other people's input made it, my ideas so much stronger, like my creative director, my account team, my strategy team, because I might come up with something, but they might have a different take on it. And as long as I'm open and I'm willing to listen, it becomes something more beautiful than I can, you know, it's the whole entire idea of working in a tribe. Yes, feedback is so important. Feedback is so important. So, you know, that's the one huge skill that I am so grateful for to advertising because it made me really learn how to work as a team. Yes, totally. And I think also, so not only working as a team, but being used to pitching ideas to a team Mm -hmm. and being used to like, I'm going to say this thing out loud and I'm going to understand who my audience is and say it slightly different to this audience. And all of those tiny tools Mm -hmm. that you get in your toolbox from working within an agency. I mean, yeah, it's crazy and you don't have friends and you don't build a community, but it is so beneficial when you go out in the world and try to build your own thing. Yeah, Dr. Seuss was in advertising, so was Andy Warhol. Um, A lot of really successful people came out of it. Speaking of success, I would love to know what are some of the success stories so far for ProMama? Good question. So that is actually a, it leads to a interesting um, issue that we are quickly realizing is a big one. So we are not able to track what women uh, jobs women are finding and what successes that they're having. And so we've realized that this is a huge issue. So right now our successes are mostly based in feedback that we're getting from the community. And that's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, and we've had a few women reach out and say, you know, I didn't think I could work from home. I thought I was going to be selling tights in a pyramid scheme forever. And I'm now you've opened my eyes and I know that I can work from home and all of these different jobs and that. So that I think is the most, um, important. I mean, that's really what we were hoping for. So to get that feedback has been really wonderful. I think we need to work harder on the back end now to figure out exactly how to track what those, those, um, little bits of success are. So for women who are listening and want to send their resume to pro mama, uh, what steps should they take? So go to ProMama and sign up for our newsletter and we'll send email with jobs right to your inbox and then you can apply from there. We're going to launch a full website soon where you'll be able to search on the website for jobs. But before we do that, we wanted to make sure we had a really solid community of women who believed in what we were doing and we're almost there. So in a few months, you'll be able to go to our website and search. But until then, please sign up for our newsletter. You'll get amazing jobs. They really are incredible in your inbox every few weeks. That's incredible. We sent out a newsletter and honestly, I'm like so excited every time. The feeling has not gone away yet. It's just really exhilarating to feel like I'm delivering on this idea and that I'm offering hope in a space where I never really felt hope. You know, for the first two years of my son's life, I really didn't feel like it was possible to work and be a mom or work in a job that really offered the things I was looking for. And now... It's hard work. I don't think it's easy for anyone to just go and find these jobs. But now that we're looking really hard and we have all these connections with these amazing companies who really value not only their employees, but mothers, they are there. They're totally there. 
and we want to help women find them. Well, this kind of leads into my next question, which is what type of companies do you work with and what type of jobs can women check out? Sure. Great question. So there are a lot of great companies that are offering amazing benefits right now, like Facebooks and Googles and those type of tech companies are like leading the way in maternity and parent benefits. It's really hard for a small business to offer similar perks, but they can offer amazing, flexible work options. So we're really seeing amazing jobs across the board from here in Austin, the um, independent school district offer amazing jobs because they're during the work day and a woman can go to school with their child and then leave and they have worked a full nine to two, which is really, really nice. Um, Wow. That's great. Right. So like depending on who you are, you need a different thing. And we're trying to offer, be really inclusive about offering all types of jobs, um, even if they are with small companies. So the types of jobs you can find, we have a set of criteria that it needs to fit. It needs to and meet at least three of the these criteria. So you need to offer either part-time um, work from home, work from home are really great options for moms, contract positions, contract positions are great because you have flexibility in deciding when you'll go to work, uh, or scheduling maternity benefits, health benefits, no stigma. Like it's bullshit. If you're a mom and there's stigma attached with that at work, like no, no job can have stigma. If you're a mom, that's amazing. You're doing amazing things and you should be celebrated. Um, and so those are some of the criteria that we have for determining whether or not a job is pro mama, uh, friendly. And how can employers get in touch with you? So they can just email us at hello at pro mama.co and we will, um, look at the criteria and look at your job and get back to you within 24 hours, most likely listed in our next newsletter. And you also have a really great Instagram page that I've just followed and uh, so should everybody else. Yes, it is underscore pro mama. My next question is, what is your advice for women who would like to advocate for themselves at work? Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good question. Um, so I think what you have to do is you have to evaluate the situation first and you have to think about is the space that you're trying to create for yourself at work, is it possible or are you in a hostile environment? Because if you're in a hostile environment, like don't try, find a job somewhere else. So if you find yourself in a situation where you can create a healthy space for yourself, then I think what you need to do is think about what you're good at and what drives you. Think about what you need and think about what would be the benefit to the company. And you need to present this dream or the thing that you want, whether it's flexible time off or it is, you know, uh, to work from home one day a week or a longer maternity leave or whatever it is that you're advocating for, make sure that you put it through the lens of how, what the company will benefit from. And that, that may seem, um, it may seem ridiculous, but you have to think about their, what they're seeing. And if you think about it through that lens, you get to, it, it just makes your whole case stronger. And then I would also suggest that if it is something you're asking for that's long-term, set up a plan so that if you can check back in. You know, how is this going in three months? Make sure everybody's on the same page. Make sure that there's space to talk about it and that you can get feedback uh, to make sure that moving forward, you're also continuing to make sure that that space you're creating for yourself is healthy and positive. That's wonderful advice. And I think that's really, really great um, for mothers. And I wonder what job providers can do to help reduce the stigma that parents feel at work. That's a really great question too. So I think a lot of the stigma comes from an honest place because when someone goes on maternity leave, it sucks for the rest of the team to have to absorb that work. Like that just sucks. So what can an employer do to make sure that that difficult situation doesn't turn into resentment? 
And that in the future, if there are any times you need to leave at five, like that's a reasonable time to leave, or you need a little bit more flexibility because your child is sick, what can you do to support that employee? And that doesn't mean that you're giving everybody unlimited PTO. That means having a dialogue. It means um, creating empathy within your team. It means you know, a 25 year old male really understands what's going on for that woman who has to take care of her child. People usually are okay. They're nice. They want to be good. And so if you could just see the humanity in each other and, and create a workspace where your employees are seeing the humanity in, in each other and understanding situations, it's just going to be so much more positive. That's great. I have two more questions. And my question is, I know you guys are called pro mama as opposed to being called pro parent. We have a lot of conversations in society about modern parenting and 50 50 parenting. And, um, you know, what does having it all as a woman and a mother mean these days? It's so different for everyone. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think it really does depend on the woman. Because having it all to one woman might mean staying at home with her children and not working. And that's perfectly fine. There might be a woman who never wants to be at home, who has a nanny and travels every week. And that's fine, too. I think we just have to all be super understanding that there is no one definition. And it is whatever it means to you. And that is, you know, that is truly happiness as a mother. And then just in regards to being pro-mama, it's something we thought so much about. And at the end of the day, it just still sucks more for women. And yes, it sucks for men too. Paternity leave is not awesome, but there's a lot more space to be made for women in the workplace than there are for men right than there is for men right now. I agree. And I like the fact that you brought up traveling too, because I don't think the current travel options are built for working moms and especially new moms. Like if you're traveling with a breast pump and you're at the airport and that breast pump breaks, you can't buy a new breast pump. No, it is devastating. I was traveling (sighs) and my breast pump broke. I was in another country and honestly like a total breakdown. And my husband Mm -hmm. had to like grab me by the shoulder because I was like absolutely melting down. And he was like, you're crying over spilt milk. You know that, right? (laughs) And I was like, it is not spilt milk. Like total, (laughs) absolute break. So yes, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Um, Totally. But there are actual, so some options are really awesome. There are perks like Um, there's these crazy ways you can send breast milk home while you're traveling and they stay on like ice and it's amazing. But yeah, traveling as a working mom, especially when you have a newborn is really hard and you just need to be upfront with your employer and talk about those things before maternity leave starts so that you are, you know, you go into not only being a mom, but afterwards in a place where you can feel comfortable and you've advocated for yourself and you can feel good about the decisions that are being made. Mm-hmm. My last question is, what is your dream as an adult? Okay, so this is crazy, but I cannot wait. This is my total dream. When I am like 85, I'm going to teach piano lessons. I'm going to have really long gray hair. I don't know how to play the piano. And I'm just going to take children on adventures for like a half an hour and then bring them back, like creative, mind-bending, amazing experiences in the woods, and then bring them back and just have them like tinker on the piano and send them home. Because like really no, like 20% of children actually learn piano at piano lessons. So their parents will never know that I'm like teaching them art and amazing things. That is my plan for when I am an, a real grown up because I'm not a grown up yet. I love it. I think it's a very beautiful vision. (laughs) If you want me to answer again with a real answer again. Yeah, you know what? You can have multiple dreams, right? That's what people think. People think they just need one dream. But like, no, you can have multiple dreams. It's like having dessert. You don't have to have just one. You can have multiple dessert. You can yes. dream. You got to allow yourself to have a lot of dreams. Exactly. A lot of dreams. And also we're going to live till we're honestly like 200. So please start having more dreams. Otherwise we will be very boring when we're 150. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you have another dream you want to share, I'm, I'm totally open for it. Um, so I, you know, in my career, I, 
I really have always just wanted to be someone who um, like was an expert at something. And I think it's, it's not something that happens that often anymore because we change what we do or, you know, um, we're not in jobs for 30 years anymore. So uh, my dream is to be an expert at something someday. I don't know what it'll be, but I want to be expert at something. That's a great game. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on the show and taking the time out of your schedule to do this. I know you just flew back from Brazil and you're a rock star because you just hopped on a podcast. So thank you for taking the time and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you so much. This was so fun. It was really fun. All right, go out and make the world a better place. All right. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Dream Nation Love. It's not Dream Nation Podcast, it's Dream Nation Love because I think my single mission in life is to teach people how to love a little bit more and together we can save the world. So it's Dream Nation Love. Share it with your friends. Have a great day and go out and make the world a better place.